Good morning, children. So, welcome back once again with the concluding part of the periodic table. See, in the last classes, I have taught you about the different characteristics of the periodic table, how the periodic table was formed, how the different theories were being given at the time of framing up a periodic table. I have already taught you about, I have taught you about the Dobernier's law of tribe, Newland law of octaves, then came Mendeleev's periodic law and the last law that we are studying till date now is the Moosley's periodic table or the Moosley's periodic law. Then I have taught you about the long form of the periodic table, how the periodic table is being divided into groups and periods. I have already given you the structure of the periodic table, the alkali metals, the alkaline not metal, the halogens, calcogen, boron family, nitrogen family, all of them, the transition elements, the inner transition elements, all of them they constitute a periodic table. Then I have taught you about the periodic properties. Now periodicity in properties, it is generally arised or it generally arises as a result of similar type of valence shell structure. It is already known to you that once an element belongs to a particular group, it has got same valency. See, if you look over here, this is a group 1 that I am showing it to you. You have seen lithium, sodium followed by potassium, rubidium, cesium, the other elements they follow. So lithium, it has got one electron in the valence shell. Similarly, sodium also has one electron in the valence cell. Actually, for lithium, the atomic number is 3. That means lithium is having 2 electrons over here and 1 electron over here. Its electronic configuration is 2, 1. Sodium, it is having its atomic number as 11. So, its electronic configuration is 2, 8, 1. That means 2 electrons in this shell, 8 electrons in this particular shell and one electron in the valence shell. So you see they have all got the same valence shell electronic configuration. So we have the different periodicity in properties. Now I have already explained to you about the atomic radius, the ionization potential and the metallic and the non-metallic characteristics. Now children, today I will be discussing with you about a very interesting property that we call it to be as electron affinity. Now what is this word electron affinity? See, the word affinity actually means love for or attraction for. Now for what will the attraction be for? Attraction will be for the electron. Okay, love for electrons or attraction for electron that is what we call it to be as electron affinity okay that is what we call it to be as electron affinity so electron affinity is actually defined as the amount of energy loss some amount of energy will be lost in gaining the electron okay we need to accept electron now who will accept the electron or who is going to accept the electron? Those elements which have deficiency for electron, they are going to accept it. But those elements which already have sufficient electron, they won't be accepting it, isn't it? So for that, let me tell you one part over here. See, if you look into this group of elements, that is lithium, sodium, other elements they follow over here. If you look carefully over here, what will you get over here? See very carefully, I am showing you the electronic arrangement. Okay, I am showing you the electronic arrangement over here. For, I am showing you the electronic arrangement for the sodium element. Look very carefully. This is for sodium 11. It is having one valence electron in the last shell and two electrons in the inner shell followed by eight electrons 
in the next shell and the last shell is having eight electrons now the electronic configuration is 281 now it needs to attain a stable electronic configuration you have learned it earlier that is in order to attain a stable electronic configuration a element should have either two electrons or eight electrons in its valence shell this is a stability criteria that you have learned earlier that is in order for an element to be stable either it should have two electrons or it should have eight electrons in its valence shell now if that is the condition that either it will have two electrons or eight electrons in the valence shell so what will happen over here listen very carefully if sodium can donate this electron completely it will donate the electron so once sodium donates this electron that means the electron is not here the electron moves out of the orbit i have already removed the electron so the electronic configuration becomes what 2,8 so this is a stable configuration this is a stable electronic configuration this will give you na plus this will give you a cation as na plus because you have already reached the stable nearest noble gas configuration what is the nearest noble gas to sodium that is neon the electronic configuration of neon is also 2,8 Okay, so sodium has already reached the nearest noble gas configuration that is neon and that is why it has already become stable by removing this electron. So, in this system, will ever sodium accept electrons from outside? No, never. Sodium is never going to accept any of the electrons from outside. What will sodium do in order to stabilize itself? It will donate the electron in its outermost orbit. It will donate the electron in its valence shell. Okay, it will donate the electron present in the valence shell in order to stabilize itself. Now, let us look for another element over here. This element is also a very interesting one. We call it to be as chlorine. See, in case of chlorine, the atomic number of chlorine is 17. The electronic configuration is 287. This is the electronic configuration for chlorine. So what am I having it over here? Two electrons over here, eight electrons in this shell and seven electrons Look very carefully over here. This shell, it is having seven electrons. The outermost valence shell is having seven electrons. Now, this is our stable arrangement. Either two electrons or eight electrons in the last shell. But chlorine is only having seven electrons. So how many electrons are short for it? Only one, one electron, only a single electron. So what will chlorine do in order to stabilize itself? Will it donate or will it give up all the seven electrons? Or will it accept one electron from outside? Which one is easier? The easier one is to accept one electron from outside. So you see, if chlorine will accept one electron from outside, chlorine will have the electron over here and it will acquire a minus charge over its head, Cl minus. That is, it will form a chloride ion over here. Okay, it will form a chloride ion over here. So, this chloride ion which is formed over here, okay. This chloride ion which is formed over here, it is a stable one. 
It is a stable one. It is not an unstable one because it has already acquired the eight electron configuration over here by gaining one electron from outside. So now it is clear to you that is metals. That is these are all metals. Okay, group one, group two, all of them they are metals. So in case of metals, electron affinity will decrease. In case of metals, because metals they have a tendency to give up electron. They don't accept electron. Metals have a tendency to give up electrons. So if that is the case, group one, group two, or all the elements, the moment you start moving downward, the metallic property goes on increasing. Their sizes goes on increasing. So as a result, the electron affinity, okay, this electron affinity will decrease. Electron affinity will decrease down the group. The moment you start moving from top to bottom in a group, the electron affinity will decrease. And in a period, across a period, you see, the moment I am moving across a period, the sizes are getting smaller and smaller. The sizes are getting smaller and smaller. Once the sizes are getting smaller, they are becoming non-metallic in nature and non-metallic substances and non-metallic elements they are characterized by accepting electrons from outside so in this case the electron affinity will increase in this case the electron affinity will increase so is the order clear to you that is the moment you start moving from top to bottom, the electron affinity will decrease because in case of metals, they don't have a tendency to accept electron. And in case of a period, the electron affinity will increase. The electron affinity will increase because their sizes are getting smaller and they are going to be converted into the non-metallic substances. So that is why the electron affinity is characterized in this particular kind of format. That is, the moment you start moving from top to bottom, the electron affinity will decrease and on moving across a period, the electron affinity will increase. The next periodic property and the last one that I'll be teaching you is electronegativity. Now what this electronegativity is like? See, the electronegativity it is a kind of property. How are we going to explain this property of electronegativity? Look very carefully. Electronegativity. Okay, electronegativity. This electronegativity, how is it explained? Look very carefully. From the name itself, you can understand that means it has something to do with electrons. It has got a relationship with electrons or it has something to do with electrons. So what is it actually? Okay, what is it actually? See, electronegativity means Electronegativity means the tendency, the tendency to draw the shared, the shared pair of electrons, shared pair of electrons towards itself. Now, what is this actually? Okay, what is the electronegativity actually? To draw the shared pair of electrons towards itself. Now, how is it going to be done? See, look very carefully. Suppose you have been provided with a compound HCl. You have been provided with a compound HCl. Now, during the formation of this compound, 
a sharing of electron has taken place. You all know that this compound HCl, this is a covalent compound. Okay, this particular compound, this is actually a covalent compound. Now, hydrogen and chlorine, they are on the opposite sides of the periodic table. Hydrogen is present in group 1, chlorine is present in group 17 of the periodic table. That means they are present on two different ends of the periodic table. Now look very carefully. Hydrogen is a kind of weak element. Okay, because it has got only one electron. So it's a very weak kind of element. Chlorine, it is having seven electrons in the outermost cell. So it is a little powerful element. So what will chlorine do is, over here, I am having a bonded pair of electrons which have been shared by both hydrogen and chlorine. What chlorine will do? Chlorine will draw these electrons closer to itself. Chlorine will draw the two shared pair of electrons closer towards itself. Okay, it will keep the electrons closer towards itself. This property of attracting the electrons closer to oneself is called as electronegativity. This particular thing is called as electronegativity. And electronegativity, see, so which elements are going to show this property of electronegativity? It is very clear that non-metals are going to show this property of electronegativity. And metals are going to show the property of electropositivity. Okay, electronegativity is a property which will be shown by the non-metallic element. Metals don't have electronegativity. Okay, metals don't have electronegativity. Their electronegativity values are very low. In case of metals, the electronegativity values are very low. Because, have you ever seen the metal attracting the electrons closer to itself? No, a metal never will attract the electrons closer to itself. But, a non-metal will always attract the electrons closer to itself. Okay, a non-metal will always attract the electrons closer to itself. But, a metal will never attract the electrons closer to itself. So, the electronegativity value for metals is very low. From here itself, the order is clear to you. Electronegativity value will decrease down the group. It will decrease down the group. The electronegativity value will decrease down the group and across a period, Across a period, it will increase. Across a period, the electronegativity value will increase. And down the group, the electronegativity value will decrease. So, be very careful over here in explaining the different periodic properties. See, we have the atomic radii, we have the metallic and non-metallic character. We have the electron affinity, we have the ionization potential, and we have the electronegativity. This electronegativity it is measured in a scale which we call it to be as a Pauling scale. Okay, now this Pauling scale it helps to measure the electronegativities of different elements. Now, why the electronegativity values are so important? Actually, the electronegativity values of different elements will tell you whether the element will form an ionic bond or it will form a covalent bond or it will undergo a coordinate bonding. So, depending on the values of electronegativity, we can classify the elements into different categories and into different groups at the time of bonding. Next portion is that the electronegativity scale, that is the Pauling scale, it says that fluorine is highly electronegative in nature. Fluorine is the first element of the group 70 and it is highly electronegative in nature. 
followed by chlorine and others and then oxygen and all they follow. Okay, so this is how we categorize or we classify the periodic table and once again revise with you the different periodic properties and in which order do they increase and decrease. But before that you have to remember at the time of explaining these properties you should remember that while explaining two factors are very interesting Okay, two factors are very dominating and what are those that is down the group the number of shells will be increasing down the group shell will increase and across the period the effective nuclear charge will increase so the very first property that we are having is the atomic radii this is the first property that we are having atomic radii so down the group down the group remember the order is like this down the group that is from top to bottom what happens to the atomic radii this increases and across the period it decreases across the period this decreases the next periodic property is the metallic character metallic character down the group this will increase and across the period this will decrease next comes the non metallic order non metallic character that is this will decrease in down the group and this will increase across the period next property is the ionization potential ip this is going to decrease down the group and this will increase across the period the next property we have is electron affinity this will also decrease down the group and this will increase across the period and the last property is electronegativity the last property is electronegativity this will also decrease down the group and this will increase across a period so this is a simplified structure of the periodic properties that you have learned okay this is a simplified structure of the periodic table that you have learned now while reading the periodic table you must remember the two properties the very first property is that down the group size increases because that is the dominating factor number of shells are being added and across a period while we are moving the effective nuclear charge is increasing and the number of shells they are constant and due to the increase in the effective nuclear charge the size is getting smaller so children while studying this chapter of periodic table you have to remember these key points or the keywords and at the time of explaining any of the periodic property it may be asked that why atomic radius increases in this order or why metallic character decreases in this order what is the reason behind it so at the time of writing down the explanation you have to mention the dominating character in that particular group or in the period and after writing down the dominating character you have to explain the order properly and clearly over there now from this periodic table i'll be giving you one homework and the homework will be like this that after studying this chapter completely on periodic table you will write down the reasons 
you will write down the reasons for the different periodic properties in different paragraphs. You will write down why atomic radii increases down the group, why atomic radii decreases across the period, why metallic character increases down the group, why metallic character decreases across a period. So for all the periodic properties, you will write down the explanations for them. Because see, until and unless you write down the explanations on your own, you won't be able to understand the order properly. Because you see, children often make mistakes. Where do they make mistakes? They often get confused. Oh, this physical property, this periodic property. So in which direction will it increase? Or in which direction will it decrease? Okay, they get confused most of the time. So in order to remove this confusion, in order to make yourself clear about the topic, you have to write down the exact reason which is required over here. So once the exact reason is written by you, or once the exact reason is already given by you over here, so it will be clear for you that in which direction this periodic property is increasing or in which direction that periodic property is decreasing or what is the basic reason behind it. So, till then, go through the chapter very well, study the chapter properly and keep in your mind the periodic properties because this is a basic chapter of your chemistry which will tell you about the different features which we will be learning in the later part of your chemistry classes. That is, we have other chapters over here to study. So there you will require this knowledge of the periodic table. So children, go through the chapter very well, study the properties, learn up the characteristics and also learn why the periodicity is being shown by these different elements which are present in the periodic table. What is the reason for the periodic property? Why do they show the periodic property? Or why are they so much uh, accustomed or why are they so much uh, habituated to show this particular kind of periodic properties that we have arranged them in the periodic table. So children, it's a summary part for you, the periodic table, the chart I have already given it to you over here, but I have not mentioned any reasons over here. But at the time you will be writing it, you will be writing down the reasons along with it. So you remember your homework, what you have to do, you have to write down the different periodic properties properly, you will write down their different reasons, you will write down their different characteristics. If possible, you can draw diagrams at the time of explaining so that your explanation will be much more acceptable. Okay, your explanation will be much more acceptable. The teacher who will be checking your copy will get much more accustomed or oh, the child knows these things. Okay, so be very specific while writing down the answers. Do not write down unnecessary details. Okay, whatever the details are required, only write down those details at the time of writing down the reasons. So, till then students, stay safe and goodbye.